Back to you again today with another MGTA story. As always, your privacy is very important on this channel, so I'll send this message to our dude while keeping him anonymous and calling him Peter. MGTA, should I give up on women before I get close to one? I'm 29 and my name is Peter. I live on planet Hearth. I guess I should talk about how I date. I was always busy and full of energy when I was a kid, and I never thought about girls. When I was in the fourth grade, I had a crush on a girl for the first time. I've never really talked to a girl, but a lot of them have liked me, but I've never liked them back. I was a happy, outgoing person until I repeated the sixth grade. After that, I started to keep to myself and became a little antisocial. From then on, I didn't change. I took the blue pill because I always wanted the girls I liked to think of me as the nice guy who wouldn't hurt them. Soon after, I started getting picked on, so when I was 14 I started working out every day. Someone told me I was too kind. That's what I was told until I found MGTA. People say I'm not being myself, so I think I'm going through red pill rage. I haven't told my family that I'm MGTA, but I did tell my brother to check out your channel. When I worked out every day, I got bigger, and people who bothered me stopped talking to me and stayed away from me. I was liked by girls, but I only cared about the girls I liked, so I turned down any girl who liked me. I feel like I'm talking too much about things that aren't that important, so I'll skip high school and college. By the time I got over being shy and unfriendly, I was in the 11th grade. This was an odd time because I felt sure of myself and like a child again, but it was too late. People at school knew I was a nice, quiet guy, so it was hard for me to make friends. I usually just went to school and then went home. College is the same. Since I studied audio engineering, there weren't that many girls in my major. I would have to meet people after class if I wanted to. Even when I was in college, I didn't stay after class. I would just go to class, talk with friends and people I knew, eat, and go home. As I said above, I'm 29 years old and have four brothers and sisters. Two little sisters, ages 13 and 10, and two little brothers, ages 21 and 5. I still keep to myself and think I'm a humble person. About two months ago, I found MGTA. I've seen MGTA videos before, but I didn't pay attention to them because I was heavily blue pilling at the time. When I first saw it about two years ago, I didn't think it was wrong. I just thought I could find the perfect girl. I was very picky about whom I dated because most of my family, including my parents, are single, divorced, and have more than one child. I didn't want to repeat that pattern. My whole family can't believe I've never been with a girl, and some girls who ask me when we're close think I'm lying. Because of this, they even ask me if I'm gay, so now I just don't answer when they do. I've been told I'm not their friend because I'm too nice. I've even had a girl tell me that I should think about dating her if things don't work out with her boyfriend. She still says this to this day. The last girl messed with my head, and it was because of her that I decided to give up on girls and relationships. Everything started to make sense when I found your channel and other MGTA channels like Sandman and Happy Humble Hermit. The last girl I got close to is 21 years old. She and I haven't talked in weeks. She didn't talk to her father, and now that I think about it, I think that was the cause of all these problems. Her mother was always mean to her because she was the oldest of her siblings. She wanted to leave, but she wasn't able to. I did everything I could to help. About a month or two after we met, I bought her a juicer for $300, which I thought was too much. She gave me some Lara bars as payment. I didn't mind because I didn't want the gift back. I felt good about myself when I spoiled her and made her happy. So right away, I was wrong to give her this as a gift. When I bought her things, I felt like I was helping her live better. We both liked to learn about the Bible, and we even ate the same things. Everything was fine for about three to four months until she found out that my friends didn't believe in the Messiah. She responded by blocking my friends and then me. Then she stopped talking to me. She must have felt bad because, after a day or two, she unblocked me but kept them blocked. I told her not to worry about me because I'm a nice guy and that we can still talk and see each other. I told her that I still believed in the Messiah and didn't know why it was such a big deal. I tried to tell her why it wasn't a big deal, but she still doesn't talk to my friends, so I don't know if what I said helped. It's not like that made me do anything. I have friends of different religions and even some atheist friends, but she thought that if I did that I was worldly or something. When I told my two friends, who are no longer together, they both said I should stop talking to her because she's too judgmental and they thought she was crazy. I'll be honest, I'm still attracted to her, and I feel like I'm too quick to forgive her for the emotional pain she caused me. How do women make it so easy to get rid of people? When I think about forgiving her, I feel like I'm giving her power.
I have to keep telling myself that, as the man, I'm the prize, not her. I cook and do everything for myself, and right now I think that a woman won't bring much to a relationship. Your videos have made me feel like it's pointless to be in a serious relationship, especially since women today are like chameleons, changing their looks and personalities at will. After she tried to make me choose between her and my friends, things got weird between us. I never picked anyone, and I told her to stop being so crazy and stop worrying. After I told her not to worry, everything was fine. Then, a few months later, she would text me random things like, what do you want from my life? Why should I trust you? And why did I stop talking to Imani? Another girl I got to know well, I forgot to say that she talked a lot about the past. She often asked me to explain things that didn't need to be brought up. If I tried to defend myself over a problem that didn't exist, I'd look and sound stupid. She didn't talk to me at all and said I didn't call her enough. This made me feel strange, so when I did call, it felt forced and I ran out of things to say. I didn't feel like I could be myself. I think she didn't trust people because her father wasn't in her life. She would avoid me for days and not answer when I didn't call, but she would text me things like hope all is well when I didn't. When I replied, she'd just say thanks, and then we wouldn't text for another day. After taking the red pills, I felt very needy and not in a good way. I feel bad about how I dealt with this. I stayed with her even though she was always dramatic and looking for problems that weren't there. She was emotionally distant, but she would ask me questions like why do you like me? That seemed impossible to answer. Be truthful. Now I know that these are tests that girls do, but back then I didn't. She was being passive aggressive by blocking me and then letting me back in a lot. I never said anything bad about her, and I always acted like I was sorry for what she was going through. Even though I spent a lot of time, energy, and money on her, she was able to treat me this way. I never understood why, after giving me the silent treatment, she would expect me to call her. She thought I was trying to pay her to be my friend, but I wasn't. Since I had money and she didn't, I gave it to her instead of putting it away. A few times, she even told me she was sorry for how she sometimes acted. Her most recent words were, hey, I don't mean to be rude. I've been thinking, and I feel like I may have tried to trick you. I want a friend whom I can call and talk to about anything, and I can't keep this to myself. I thought you were trying to be better than me or do what other people do, and sometimes you went MIA and I went MIA I don't think our talks are helpful, and I can't keep acting like everything is fine. I started to ignore you because I was talking to someone else a lot, and I thought you were trying to keep me around by buying me things. People who are broken often hurt other people, so please forgive me for not being whole. She was always like this, and I think she might still be. I didn't know there was another guy, to be honest. If I had known, I would have stopped. She often had bad moods, anger, and anxiety that would last for a few hours or days. I was always around to try to make her feel better. Still, if I didn't do what she wanted, she could block me or give me silent treatment. Even after everything, including knowing about MGTA, I still feel a little bit of a connection to her. We never even had sex. Tonight she texted me after weeks of not saying anything. She said, Hey, Dre. I hope everything is okay. I'm not sure if I should just ghost her or tell her how I feel now that I'm MGTA. When it came to me, she always looked for the bad things. It seemed almost too good to be true. I don't party, smoke, drink, or do anything. I just work, go to the gym, come home, cook, watch YouTube or play video games, and sleep. I still do Bible, Sefer studies and read a lot of naturalistic health, philosophy, history, and self-improvement books. There's no reason for her to not trust me, but that's just how it was. She's a lot like me, but she seems very dramatic and unstable to me. Should I just ignore her or try to get back in touch with her and take the purple pill? I'm still a little bit angry about the red pill, and I'm still hoping that if I just tell her how I feel, she'll change into a Proverbs 31 woman. Aside from what I went through with her, we have similar personalities, but her past and how we talk to each other have hurt our friendship. Do I answer the text she sent that said, I hope everything is okay? She always makes me feel like I'm in the wrong. She makes me feel bad about myself when I don't do what she wants. I love your videos and other content, and I donate it. My family and I are moving, so we are just waiting for our next paycheck. I probably left some things out by accident, but I think this is enough for you to get the idea. I'm sorry if my grammar was bad or if the story was hard to understand. I've never sent someone an email this long or told anyone a story like this. I usually handle things like this on my own and keep everything to myself, but after watching your videos, I feel like you are one of the only people I can ask for help. 
Sandman will just tell me to drop her and stop being a beta blue pill boy. I think you could teach me something from this. Even if you don't answer, it still feels good to say this to someone. I'm still going to watch your videos because I know that if you don't answer, I can find the answer I need in one of your videos. I didn't want you to make a video, I just needed help finding the answer. I have a feeling you'd say to just ignore her and let her go, but I'd love to know why. I already know that your hoodie is up, your cap is on backward, and your MGTOW, but your answer will still be helpful. Thank you very much, and may God bless you. This is the recipe for the type of girl who gets migraines after a breakup. You turn out to be Mr. Fix-It. You love it at first, but after a while, you start to hate it. Drop it, man. And even though you might expect a more detailed answer from me, there isn't much to say about this. A man with a stable life is affected by his traumatic past. If I had a nickel for every time a story like this came out.